On the spot news media, we got the latest news. We don't care about the views, we just represent it right. Put local news internationally every night. On the spot, wave that Jamaican flag from left to right. Let's get it right, y'all know the type. We ain't dealing with the hype. We make it take flight. Yeah, man, my viewers and subscribers, what a one. A blessed and wonderful Wednesday morning to each and every person out there tuning into on the spot news media. Now, my peeps, you don't know how we do it over on this side each and every morning. We have to give thanks and praise to the Most High Creator for the preservation of life because life is indeed the greatest. So, in the morning, my peeps, I have a few stories for share with you, the regular members of Chan Public, and also members of the diaspora. So, please like the video, share the video, watch the entire vlog so you can get a full understanding and a better appreciation of everything we are going in Jamaica. So, watch this now, my peeps. Jamaica has officially gotten a brand new commissioner of police. When Mr. Brand New, not brand new to the Jamaica Constabulary Force, but brand new to the post as the head of the Jamaica Constabulary Force. So on your screen, as uh, you can see, is the newly appointed Commissioner of Police, uh, Dr. Kevin Blake, to the left of the screen, shaking the hand of the outgoing Commissioner of Police, that's Major General Anthony Anderson. Now, Dr. Blake officially took the button as head of the JCF during a change of command ceremony at the office of the police commissioner and Old Oprood in St. Andrew on Monday evening. Dr. Kevin Blake has pledged to continue the modernization of the Jamaica Constabulary Force. Dr. Kevin Blake officially assumed the reins of the JCF from Major General Anthony Anderson on Tuesday. He's vowing to establish the JCF as a trusted superintendent of law and order in the country of Jamaica. Dr. Kevin Blake, for those who don't know, is a 20-year veteran of the JCF and he is the 15th native Jamaican to assume the post of commissioner. Dr. Kevin Blake is sending an early warning to criminal elements and their facilitators. So now we are going to hear from the man himself, the newly appointed Commissioner of Police, Dr. Kevin Blake. Listen. Jamaica deserves a police force that is responsive, a force that is modernized and on par with the best law enforcement agencies in the world. Jamaica wants justice. And for many Jamaicans, justice often starts in an interaction on any given day with the police. That interaction, whether forceful or otherwise, must be predictably professional and respect for the law and for the individual. We know this as the JCF. For over 150 years, we have been the most tactile workforce in Jamaica. And in more recent years, we have made significant strides in improving how we interact and engage with the people whom we are here to serve and protect. Under my watch, unprecedented programs will be launched to win the hearts and minds of communities across Jamaica to restore the JCF as the rightful legal guardians of Jamaica, providing trusted and reliable security services. We know that there are far more lawful and law-abiding people in Jamaica than the lawless and criminal among us. Make no mistake, we will isolate these criminals. We will disrupt criminal gangs. We will pursue, capture, and build airtight cases for the conviction of the producers, the facilitators, and the sympathizers of crimes whose only interest and desire is to cause hurt, mayhem, and destruction. These people do not deserve the shelter and protection of law-abiding citizens. Ladies and gentlemen, we only have one Jamaica. Our beautiful island that rivals every country on earth as a leading tourism destination with the warmest and most hospitable people on the planet. The Jamaican people deserve to live peacefully and to enjoy a safe, secure society, free of fear, 
free of crime and violence, and we must protect our nation home against all threats, external and internal. And in so doing, the Jamaica Constabulary Force will not fail in its duty to serve and protect the lawful majority. Now as always, my peeps, the pretty speeches. But I hope Dr. Kevin Blake ready for put on him combat suit and decide if he go out there and fight crime among the officers and not just to sit in his high chair and hand down commands. And I hope and pray that he will not be swayed by political intervention, whether it be from the side of the PNP or the side of the JLP. And I hope that he also uses his office to push a little bit harder on the government, both sides of the political divides, to enhance the laws to suit our present day crime so that the Jamaican police can fight crime more effectively so. Because without the laws being amended and being drafted to suit our present day situation, fighting crime is literally a waste of time. Yeah, man. So in a way, make we continue. Now, uh, the body of a male was found in a manhole. And the body that was found by the police in the Kingston Western Police Division is suspected to be that of this man presently on your screen identified as Andrew Cunningham. Andrew Cunningham is said to be of a 11 Ramsey Road address in the Kingston 13 area. Andrew Cunningham was recently reported missing by family and friends at the Denham Town Police Station. His body was however found wrapped in a sheet and the sheet was soaked with red substance leaking from his body. He was found stuffed in a manhole about 10 feet deep in the vicinity of the Kingston Public Hospital. So the police launched a search of the area. A search was conducted of the area and also of his residence. At his residence, the police saw a trail of the red substance that leaked from his body. A search of the house revealed spent casings inside his house. So the police are assuming that he was taken out by criminal elements at his dwelling home. Hence the reason why the spent casings and also the red substance was found at his home and then his body was taken from that location and stuffed in a manhole behind the Kingston Public Hospital. Now anyone having any information surrounding the knockings and clappings that resulted in the last life of this man presently on your screen, please give the information to the Denham Town Police. And as always, if you don't trust the police, link on the Spot News Media or any like-minded vlogger. Give us the information and we will most definitely pass it on to the relevant authorities who can make effective change. Yeah, man. Now over there in the troubled war-torn St. Catherine North Police Division, another knockings and clappings go on over that side. That knockings and clappings took place on Bongo Lane in Spanish Town, St. Catherine. Now the deceased man has since been identified as 33-year-old Samura Pusey, but more popularly known in the streets as Not Nice. Not Nice is said to be a laborer of Bongo Lane in Spanish Town, St. Catherine. So for those who is not sure where is this Bongo Lane in Spanish Town, St. Catherine, it's in the community of Camarty. Now it is said that he was chased and taken out in a hail of bullets by criminal elements who drove up in a motor vehicle, alighted from that motor vehicle and fired several shots in his direction, hitting him all over the upper body and head. He lost his life, same place. 
on the spot. Yeah, man. Now over there in the garden parish of St. Anne, the community of Aberdeen in Brownstone was rocked with yet again another brutal slaying of a taxi operator on Tuesday morning. The deceased taxi operator has since been identified as 32-year-old Marlon Mannings, said to be of a Windsor address in St. Anne's Bay. The police suspects that he was taken out between Monday night and Tuesday morning. The body of Mr. Mannings, which had a wound to the head, was found close to the Aberdeen main road by a passerby sometime around 6.30 a.m. Tuesday morning. The sentence Bay Police is presently investigating. So we are going to continue further west in the morning here and make a stop at the crime-riddled, war-torn, violence-prone St. James Police Division where this criminal element here, presently on your screen identified as Omar, was taken out in a hail of bullets, smack in the middle of Moby St. James, right at the KFC. Yeah, man. It is said that this brother here is a bike delivery rider by day, but a criminal element by night. This brother here, as you can see on your screen, his name on Instagram is 6don411. Now, the thing about criminal elements in Mobe are their affiliates, supporters, sympathizers, whatsoever you may call them, whatsoever the capacity or the role that that person may be playing doesn't necessarily have to be the Nakis and Clappies themselves. Them always attach the gang name to fit them name. So for those who don't know what the 411 stands for, it's a gang name hails out of the blood lane community of Norwood, St. James. So these set of criminal elements represents 5150. Yeah, man. And this brother is said to be a close friend and affiliate also of the criminal element being displayed as an artist known as Brysko. In not so recent times, on the spot news media did a vlog on the criminal element artist known as Brysko, where I got a lot of negative backlash. Anticipated all of that still. But as always, I care zero because the truth is the truth. And Brysko is a known crime producer in the St. James Police Division. And this criminal element here presently on your screen is also a close affiliate of his. Now, it is widely stated that this is the beginning of reprisals for the knockings and clappings of Sudin. Sudin was the female criminal element that was taken out in Westmoreland just a few days ago where it is said that over 40 spent casings was found on her knockings and clapping scene. Now I've warned and I've stated that reprisal is a must as it relates to the knockings and clappings of Sudin. So Dean, as we all know, was the girlfriend then of the reputed gang leader for the 1452 gang. And they are arch rivals with that of the 5150 gang. So Sudin was the driver of the motor vehicle when 1214, among others, was sitting in the back of the vehicle, pull up on Jimmy and near him food and broke the plate. Jimmy, presently on your screen, is said to be the brother of the reputed gang leader for the 5150 gang. <laughs> yeah, man. So, this brother here, presently on your screen, identified as Omar, was taken out in a hail of bullets because he represents 411 Blood Lane and also that of the 5150 gang. When officers arrived on the scene, 
it is said that they retrieved over 23 spent casings on that scene. So you know, say, him get over 20 can all over the upper body and head. Many persons were saying that, my God, them take the life of another innocent man. Not knowing that this brother here is a delivery man by day and a criminal element by night. Yeah, man. And a lot of times, you know, my peeps, some of these criminal elements who are not known by us, the regular members of Chan Public, because we are not deeply rooted into their criminal gangs and doings. But trust and believe, the rival criminal elements know all of who involved in the gang war we are fight. So they are targeting each other and taking out each other. So it's a win-win situation for us when criminal elements cancel out criminal elements. Now, we should all brace ourselves, police and citizens alike, in Montego Bay, said James, for more reprisal, knockings and clappings. Really sad, my peeps. But it is what it is, and we just have to brace ourselves feet. So anyway, my peeps, just go and look out on a corner eye, as I've always stated. Because what? The old dirty corner boy, them. Always out there. Alerts. Yeah, man. So anyway, my peeps, remember to like, share, subscribe to the channel. Stay tuned to On The Spot News Media as I continue to bring you fresh news and updates in a subsequent newscast. On The Spot News Media. Yeah, man.